Hello, I'm Hannah Kim, Center Grant Administrator at the Beckman Laser Institute. I will share some best practices for complying with the NIH public access mandate because compliance is essential. I will cover important things that you need to know about NIH public access policy and then go into the step-by-step -step process for compliance. NIH public access policy requires that published journal articles resulting from NIH-funded research be made available to the public no later than 12 months after the date of publication. This means that peer-reviewed published manuscripts must be deposited in PubMed Central, which is a digital archive that is intended for providing public access. Non-compliance with this policy affects UCI researchers because funding from NIH can be withheld. If one or more NIH grants are acknowledged in the manuscript, any PI on the grant, as well as the author or authors, are responsible for compliance. The compliance requirement applies to manuscripts published on or after April 7, 2008. Compliance is achieved when the NIHMS number has been issued, indicating that the file has been submitted and you are awaiting a PMC ID number. One way to make sure a PMC ID has been assigned is to locate it in PubMed at UCI at the URL listed below. The process for compliance should actually begin as soon as your article has been accepted for publication in a peer-reviewed journal. If your manuscript is not deposited in the NIH manuscript system within three months of publication, it is non-compliant with the NIH public access mandate. This video is divided into sections so you can go directly to the topic that you choose. Now that you have seen an overview, you can jump ahead to one of the following full screen titles. Things to consider before submitting your manuscript using NIH MS, entire process for NIH public access compliance, reporting compliance to NIH. When you hover the mouse cursor over the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen, you will see thumbnails of the video. Grab the position knob and move it to the right until you find the full screen title you are looking for. Another option is you can click one of the timecode links below the screen to go directly to the full screen title. If you would like to know what to do to prepare for manuscript submission, just keep watching. The NIH website describes compliance as a three-step process. It is important to address the copyright policies. As soon as your manuscript is accepted for publication, it should be deposited in PubMed Central using the NIH Manuscript Submission System. Once the submission requirement is complete, the manuscript will be assigned a PMC ID number that should be cited with the publication in your NIH biosketches and annual reports. Now before you even submit your manuscript for publication, it's important to review the publisher's policy for open access. The good news is publishers will permit compliance with the NIH requirement and some will even facilitate it. Use the NIH website to determine if the journal will deposit your manuscript for you. It is important for you to communicate to the publisher prior to publication that you receive funding for the research from NIH. When a publisher submits a manuscript to NIHMS, the corresponding author will be assigned the role of reviewer. When the submission is complete, the reviewer will receive an email request to review and approve the deposited manuscript. The reviewer will be asked to certify the manuscript and add funding if applicable. Since only one reviewer can be assigned at a time, if he or she fails to act, the reviewer role may be reassigned. Another author or the PI may claim the manuscript so that the approval can proceed. If the publisher does not submit your manuscript to NIHMS, you will have an opportunity to assign a reviewer at the submission stage. The reviewer can be one of the authors or a PI on any of the NIH grants linked to the manuscript. 
Details about the approval process are included in the step-by-step -step instructions that begin after the full screen title, Entire Process for NIH Public Access Compliance. In addition to knowing who you will assign as a reviewer, you also need to be aware of which grants were recorded in the acknowledgement section of the manuscript. Your publication will be linked to each NIH grant that is listed in the acknowledgements. Since there are many variables when it comes to publisher policies on NIH public access, we're going to cover the general requirements. If you have questions about a particular publisher, please contact Mitchell Brown, Scholarly Communications Coordinator at UCI. The Sherpa Romeo website is a great resource for looking up the publisher's public access policies. Search for the journal by name to see the publisher's copyright policies. You can find important information about the publication, such as journal-specific embargo periods. If you have difficulty finding a specific journal on this website, you can contact Mitchell Brown. It is a good practice to keep both the final published version as well as a peer-reviewed, edited, pre-publication version of the manuscript, along with the separate table and figure files, if applicable. Use the Sherpa Romeo website to determine which version of the manuscript the journal will allow you to use for public access. You can always contact Mitchell Brown if you need additional help to determine which version to submit. In this section, we will cover the entire process from the beginning for making your manuscript available in PubMed Central. This is the website for the NIH Manuscript Submission System. When the publisher does not deposit the manuscript, anyone designated by the author or PI can begin the submission process here. Please keep in mind these are not UCI websites and may change at any time. So if you encounter unexpected screens, please contact era at research.uci.edu and we will do our best to keep this video updated. On the NIHMS website, you will find a graphic that provides an overview of the manuscript submission process. You'll be seeing this graphic again because it represents milestones in the compliance process. You will use the NIH Public Access Compliance Tools on the NCBI website. We strongly advise that you complete the preparation that was described in the previous section before you log in to the system. As you can see, there are multiple ways to log in. There are two ways we recommend to get you started, depending on whether or not you have an ERA Commons login. If you do not have an ERA Commons login, click on the link to Register for an NCBI account. Follow the instructions to create an account. Your registration confirmation will include instructions about an email you will receive to confirm your email address. You now have access to multiple systems. Enter the URL nihms.nih.gov to navigate to the NIH Manuscript Submission System and begin the process. If, on the other hand, you already have an ERA Commons account, you can use it to sign in to NIHMS. However, the very first time you use it to log in, you must link your ERA Commons account with your My NCBI account. Click on ERA Commons. Initially, you will see the NIH Secure Login screen. Type in your ERA Commons username and password. By default, the option to create a new NCBI account will be selected. Click Continue. You will see a message indicating you are successfully registered. Now that you have access to My NCBI, you can navigate to the NIH Manuscript System to submit your manuscript. Scroll down and click Submit Data. Under Quick Start, you can select NIH Manuscript System. Regardless of whether or not you choose to submit a file, the next time you log in to My NCBI, you will go directly to the NIHMS page. To find out whether or not the publisher already submitted the manuscript, you can search by NIH MSID or NIMS ID. If you don't have a NIMS ID number and would like to make sure the title information is already in the system, we recommend that you locate the manuscript in PubMed at UCI. You can search by author or by title. If you don't find it immediately after manuscript publication, 
We do not recommend that you enter it manually. Allow at least a week for the citation to appear in PubMed. Once you find the citation, you can begin a new manuscript submission. Click Submit New Manuscript. During the submission process, there are three search options for submitting title information. We recommend option two, search for the citation in PubMed. Enter the name of the author or PI and click search. When the list is updated, if you see a radio button to the left of the title information, the manuscript has not yet been submitted. Click on the button to select. As you proceed with submission, the progress bar will show how far along you are in the process. Next, you can add the relevant funding information. Although funding information is not required at this point, because the author or PI will have the opportunity to add relevant funding during the initial review step. Upload your manuscript files. Please note that if the publisher does not allow the submission of the final published version, you must upload the final peer-reviewed edited version, along with separate files for figures and tables, if applicable. After you check your files, click Set Reviewer and Embargo. By default, you will be assigned as the reviewer. You will be able to set the embargo based on what you learned about the publisher's public access policies from the Sherpa Romeo website. You will also have the option to assign a reviewer. Remember, the reviewer can be any person who is an author of the manuscript or a PI on the NIH funds added. If you assign a reviewer, the designated reviewer will be able to set the embargo and then click Send to Reviewer. Congratulations! Now that we've completed Step 1 together, you can consider yourself an expert at depositing files. You have mastered the most time-consuming part of this process. Next, we will cover the approval process. Keep in mind that at both the initial and final approval stages, a different reviewer can be assigned. Additional NIH funding can be added at this time as well. First, the reviewer will receive an email requesting initial approval of the manuscript submission. You will see the NIH MS number referenced in the subject line. Initial approval means after the reviewer reviews the submission, he or she confirms or adds associated funding. Then the reviewer can either reject or approve the submission for processing in NIHMS. If the assigned reviewer does not approve the manuscript within about a week, the status will become stalled. Another author or PI can claim the manuscript and reassign the reviewer in order to keep the process moving. If you reassign the reviewer, he or she will have the option to select the embargo and then approve the submission. We have completed step two, initial approval. The reviewer will receive a second email requesting approval of the final PMC ready version of the manuscript. Final approval means the reviewer reviews the PMC ready documents and either requests corrections or approves the documents for inclusion in PMC. We have completed step four, final approval. After the reviewer's final approval, the PMC ID will be assigned. Then you will be able to confirm by locating the abstract of the article in PubMed.gov. However, we encourage you to use PubMed at UCI because it has UCE links. UCE links provide you with more options to access articles that are not publicly available. Use the link to uclibs.org slash PID slash 11594. An alternative way to get to PubMed at UCI is from the Grunigan Medical Library website. Below the heading that says Core Resources, 
click on the button for PubMed at UCI. If you can't find the full text article, don't hesitate to contact Mitchell Brown. The final requirement is reporting compliance to NIH. My NCBI can be used to track your compliance for each manuscript. To check the status, go to My Bibliography. The site shows a yellow dot for in process, green dot for compliant, and red dot for non-compliant. In order to ensure that compliance will be reflected in your annual reports, the last step is for you to add the PMCID number to the citation in your NIH biosketch. Let's review the steps for submission and reporting. Know the publisher's copyright policies on public access. Submit the manuscript in nihms.gov. Follow up on approval of initial manuscript submission and final PMC-ready documents. Check PubMed at UCI for the PMCID number. And add the PMCID number to your NIH biosketch. In summary, your goal is to make sure your NIH-funded published manuscripts are available in PubMed Central for public access. If you're an author, as soon as your manuscript is accepted for publication, think NIH Public Access Compliance. Take advantage of the additional training that's available online by clicking on one of the links below. If you have any questions or you are interested in scheduling individual or group training sessions, please contact me at hana.kim at uci.edu or you can call 949-824-2251. If you have questions about publisher policies, contact Mitchell Brown at mcbrown at uci.edu. If you have any questions about myncbi.gov, contact Linda Murphy at lmurphy at uci.edu. Remember, the NIH public access policy is a federal mandate and compliance is essential.